Number eight, Kelly K. Green. On February the 2nd of 2020, Instagram model Kelly K. Green, known to her social media following simply as Kelly K., stormed the field during the Super Bowl at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Green, a Los Angeles resident, jumped a Northwest rail and got into a restricted area during the game. According to Green's account of the incident, she had catapulted herself over a 10-foot wall to reach the area. The 27-year-old's plan was to run onto the field and rip off her dress to reveal the bikini underneath. Footage from football fans seated close to the incident showed Green being tackled by multiple security members during her streaking attempt. As she was being escorted away, Green lifted her dress and mooned those in attendance. She would later complain of being bruised up by security personnel as well as being kept in a cold holding cell underneath the stadium for roughly eight hours. Green also reported being interrogated by Homeland Security and the FBI before being taken to the Miami-Dade County Jail for processing. She was charged with trespassing on property, a misdemeanor for which there's a maximum penalty of 12 months in jail. After she was bonded out, the model made multiple posts on Instagram about the incident and even uploaded a photo of her mugshot. The stunt had reportedly been set up by Vitally Uncensored, an adult website owned by Vitaly Zdorovetsky, himself known for participating in or putting together numerous field invasions during sporting events. He'd allegedly bought Green Super Bowl ticket in exchange for her running on the field while wearing a bikini that had his brand name on it. Number 7. Brissa Dominguez 25-year-old Instagram model Brissa Dominguez was arrested at a hotel in Clearwater, Florida in 2017 following an altercation with police officers. On July the 5th, the authorities were called to the Edge Hotel just after 4 a.m. to deal with the disturbance. Dominguez had been told by management that she was no longer welcome on the premises, but she nevertheless refused to leave. Security had seen her going into another guest room and alerted the authorities. There was indication, according to the police report, that Dominguez, who boasted over 70,000 followers, was under the influence of alcohol at the time. The police arrived to find that the model was nude. Officer Richard Edmonds handed her a towel to cover herself, but she grabbed it and whipped him in the face with it. She then kicked him as he stood in front of her. Another member of the law enforcement team approached Dominguez from behind and attempted to make the arrest, at which point he was mule kicked by her. The model intentionally kicked three officers while handcuffed and also attempted to bite and spit on one of them. She was eventually brought into custody for trespassing after warning, but also faced charges of resisting an arrest with violence and battery on a law enforcement officer. Number 6. Mary Malloy In 2018, fitness model Mary Malloy from Brisbane, Australia, was arrested in connection to an MDMA drug operation led by her former bodybuilder boyfriend, Jason Atkins. The street-level enterprise ran from 2016 to 2018 across the Queensland capital and at the height of his power, Atkins was making daily bank transactions of around $200,000. The operation took a major hit in 2017 after a stockpile of pills was seized by police from one of Atkins' stash houses. The 32-year-old became concerned that he wouldn't be able to cover his debts and face repercussions. He thus enlisted the help of Instagram famous Malloy in her mid-twenties at the time, who assisted him in the enterprise in recovering the money he owed. Detectives raided several properties operated by Atkins and three weeks after the couple had broken up, they were both arrested. Malloy pleaded guilty to multiple charges that included supplying and trafficking of dangerous drugs, for which she was given a three-year suspended sentence in April of 2020. Atkins was in prison for seven years and would be eligible for parole after two. Number 5. Yoman Fuad In 2017, Yoman Fuad, a woman in her early 20s, was arrested outside of a Miami Beach nightclub after being identified and approached by one of her victims. 31-year-old Alain René Gallette confronted Fuad with whom he'd gone back to his residence in March. Galette, a music industry professional, alleged that after he and Fuad had had intercourse, she drugged him and made off with some of his luxury goods. The items included clothing, jewelry, and a Rolex watch, totaling over $32,000. 
Surveillance footage from his building appeared to confirm his version of events as Fuad was captured, leaving with some of his belongings. When they met, she'd told Galette that her name was Amina. She'd changed her hair color and cut since their last encounter, but he recognized the woman by the tattoos on her hands. They began to argue in front of the nightclub and the police were called to the scene to take Fuad into custody. The woman, also described as an Instagram model, subsequently told a judge that she was a high-end escort. Galette would later claim that he hadn't been aware of this aspect as their night together hadn't included any monetary exchange. He wasn't, however, Fuad's first victim. About a year prior, she and an unnamed female friend had met a man at a nightclub in the Fontainebleau Hotel who offered to get a room for the three of them. As they entered the room, Fuad, who'd used the name Rebecca Arias, and her friend watched him place a $46,000 Rolex watch and $8,000 in cash inside the hotel room safe. He then went downstairs to retrieve an overnight bag from his car. Upon his return, he realized that Fuad, her accomplice, and his belongings were gone. He had assumed that one of the women had watched him for the code to the safe. Fuad was already wanted for the 2016 theft by the time that she targeted Galette, but had managed to evade capture by constantly changing her appearance. She took a plea deal on the Florida cases for charges that included larceny, grand theft, and false identification and spent roughly a year in prison. However, the investigation into Fuad continued and Miami police tweeted out a picture of her at the moment of her arrest, asking others if they'd been victimized by her. She was revealed as a prime suspect in a string of other cases of seduction and theft on the East Coast that stretched up to New York. In fact, following her release from the Miami jail, she ended up in front of the Manhattan Supreme Court to answer to four counts of grand larceny for victimizing four men in Manhattan from 2015 to 2016. Number 4. Tori Ann Lila Hunter Australian Instagram model Tori Ann Lila Hunter allegedly faced spending five years in a Balinese prison in August of 2019 on charges of smuggling drugs into the country. Indonesia is well known for its hard stance against drugs, with offenders sometimes even being given the death penalty. Hunter was stopped at an airport in Bali, strip searched and detained for further questioning. Hunter was carrying dexamphetamine for her ADHD, Valium for anxiety and to help her sleep, and Soriquel for depression related to bipolar disorder. They were in pharmacy labeled boxes and she had a note from her doctor. Nevertheless, she was presented with a list that classified her personal medication as class A drugs in the country. Hunter uploaded a video of her being driven in a car by an officer to Instagram and also documented her living conditions, posting a photo with a bag of bread which she captioned, plain bread for dinner like I'm a street dog. She ultimately spent four days in jail before the matter was cleared with the Australian embassy and claimed that local authorities had extorted her out of more than $25,000 for her release. Hunter believed that she'd been targeted because of her social media status as a model and influencer. Number 3. Catherine Marnie In 2018, a university student was charged with assault and disorderly conduct for attacking her boyfriend when he tried to put an end to their relationship. The incident took place in early March in a dorm at Fairfield University in Connecticut. 19-year-old Catherine Marnie, an Instagram model with over 100,000 followers and one of the university's top swimmers, had been dating Ben Kebble. Originally from the Isle of Wight, Kebble was also on the swim team and, like Marnie, a freshman. He told her that they should no longer see each other, and it's unclear if what followed was preceded by an argument, but Marnie proceeded to repeatedly punch him in the stomach and face. Kebble tried to grab Marnie's shoulder, but was unable to stop her and consequently fled into a friend's room. The attack left him with a bloodied and broken nose, the pictures of which he shared with friends on Snapchat. He captioned it, the Katie thing comes with a broken nose, lol. Marnie was arrested after the incident and held on a $1,500 bond. Number 2. Amber Rose Tyson In January of 2018, Amber Rose Tyson led the police on a car chase through Victorville, California. San Bernardino County Police responded to the 13100 block of Flint Lane following reports of vandalism from residents whose windows had been broken. 
The police arrived to find 22-year-old Tyson driving her BMW erratically and at high speeds through the neighborhood. A deputy activated the siren and warning lights on his patrol car, but the Instagram model didn't pull over. It marked the beginning of a pursuit that would ultimately last for roughly 40 miles on the I-15 freeway. Tyson actually uploaded a video to her Instagram account during the chase, in which multiple patrol cars could be seen in her rear view mirror. In the video, the model claimed that she wasn't going to stop while also using explicit language in reference to her pursuers. One of the deputies successfully employed a pursuit intervention technique and Tyson was forced to slow down in the Rancho Cucamonga area because of the semi-trucks ahead of her on the road. She was arrested and charged for evading police, driving under the influence and vandalism. In August of 2019, more than a year after the chase, Tyson was once again in trouble with the law at around 2 a.m. in a Hollywood parking lot. A Ford Mustang had blocked her Mercedes. The owner and his friends and several other bystanders had been getting food from a taco truck nearby. Enraged, Tyson started screaming at them to move their vehicle. Reports on the matter were varied, with some witnesses claiming that the owner had refused to make space for Tyson and others saying that he was in the process of moving the car. Whatever the case might have been, surveillance footage would show Tyson repeatedly reversing her car and crashing it into the Mustang before pulling away. One man would report that the model actually hit him in the leg with her Mercedes, but the extent of his injuries was unclear. Tyson then returned on foot and caused more chaos by attacking two women, slapping one of them and punching the other in the back of the head. She later turned herself in and, among others, was charged with three felony counts of assault with a deadly weapon, along with one felony count each of hit-and-run driving, resulting in injury to another person. Tyson, who faced up to eight years in prison, pleaded not guilty. Number 1. Monique Agostino In November of 2018, 22-year-old Monique Agostino assisted a group of teenage males as they committed a string of burglaries on Sydney's North Shore. The Instagram model whose following received a major boost from a post of her donning a Catwoman costume, acted as a getaway driver but also took a more hands-on role as the illegal activities were carried out. On the 6th of November, CCTV footage would show the masked woman using a chisel to break into a pizza restaurant in Kalani Heights. She and her accomplices also attempted to force their way into the nearby House of Fruit convenience store and the neighboring La Parisienne Cafe. That same day, she was part of a break-in at the Stanley Street Cafe in St. Ives, from where $300 in cash and a credit card was stolen. The card was later used at a McDonald's, which facilitated the authorities' efforts in tracking down the burglars. In late November, Agostino and her crew targeted the Forestfield Bakery and made off with over $1,000 in cash. Agostino was arrested and sentenced to two years in prison, with a minimum of 18 months served, after also being convicted of possessing a knife in a Target, possessing illegal drugs, and shoplifting a $90 jacket. Number 9. Anthony Elonis On December the 8th of 2010, Anthony Elonis was arrested in Northampton County, Pennsylvania after posting threatening messages on Facebook directed towards his ex-wife, co-workers, police forces, and the FBI. Elonis refuted federal charges, claiming that he was an aspiring rap artist and that the post had simply been an example of artistic expression. He also noted that many of the lyrics he'd used originated from comedy sketches and that he'd merely altered them to fit his personality. One of the videos in question was the song I Want to Kill the President by the whitest kids you know, in which the artists make fun of the thin line between freedom of speech and threatening behavior. Elonis told authorities he didn't intend on carrying out any of the threats he'd issued, but the court rejected his testimony. He was ultimately sentenced to 44 months in prison, plus three years of supervised release. Almost a decade later, then 37-year-old Elonis was charged with cyberstalking. On July the 21st of 2021, he was accused of harassing the prosecutor from his original criminal trial, as well as his ex-wife and another former partner via Twitter and text messages. Elonis was found guilty of three counts of cyberstalking on August the 5th of 2022. 
following a five-day trial. Number eight, Jalen Harvey. Real estate agent Joseph Vindell was murdered on March the 7th of 2021 by 20-year-old Jalen Harvey. During a robbery gone wrong in New Orleans, Louisiana, Vindell, aged 29, had posted an ad for a red Honda dirt bike on several online marketplaces and had eventually received an offer from Harvey for $2,800. The two men subsequently agreed to meet. Vindell's girlfriend grew concerned after he failed to return from the meeting and contacted the authorities who tracked his phone's GPS. Police arrived at the location of the sale and noticed the dirt bike in the suspect's backyard. While questioning Harvey, he admitted to shooting Vindell but claimed to have acted in self-defense. According to his testimony, the deceased had been the one to initially pull out a gun, allegedly wanting to keep the dirt bike and the money. An autopsy conducted on the victim's remains determined that he'd suffered from injuries to his hands, which indicated he couldn't have been holding a weapon in the moments leading up to his death. Harvey eventually admitted to attempting to destroy evidence of the crime by dousing the victim's body with gasoline. He was found guilty of first-degree murder as well as obstruction of justice and monetary abuse and was consequently sentenced to life in prison. Number 7. James McKinney Jr., Jaquan Taylor and Shamar Pope, a trio of young adults named James McKinney Jr., Jaquan Taylor and Shamar Pope were arrested on October the 10th of 2018 in connection to a shooting that occurred in Beaufort County, South Carolina. The group had reportedly been arguing with cousins Desmond Gorham and Kyle Gaskins Jr. on social media before the two parties eventually agreed to meet in person. When the cousins, who were 18 and 20 respectively, arrived at the agreed-upon location, McKinney, Taylor and Pope opened fire. Police were alerted by concerned neighbors who'd heard the altercation and ensuing gunfire. The three suspects had managed to flee by the time police made it to the address. Both victims were taken to the ER, where they were reportedly kept in stable condition. Pope turned himself in later that same night, while the two other suspects were arrested soon after, whereupon they were each charged with two counts of assault with intent to kill. Their bonds were set at varying amounts between $30,000 and $50,000. Number six, Tristan Green, Dawn Embry, and Brittany Farmer, all in their late teens or early 20s, were arrested at a parking lot in St. Augustine, Florida. On May the 16th of 2017, the trio had reportedly attacked a fourth woman over a Facebook disagreement. An off-duty deputy noticed the three culprits running up to an SUV outside a Publix store and contacted 911. Several witnesses then saw the three young women striking the victim and pulling at her hair as she stepped out of her car. Embry and Green were reported as having been visibly intoxicated, which was later confirmed when they were unable to legibly sign their affidavits. The women initially claimed not to have been the ones who started the scuffle, explaining how it had begun as a social media dispute, which then continued in the parking lot when they were attacked by the unidentified woman and her friends. A video recorded by a passerby as well as the off-duty deputy's testimony contradicted this claim. All three women were charged with assault and battery, but only Green and Embry were detained. Farmer was allowed to leave on her own recognizance after being unable to find someone to look after her children. Number 5. Joshua Gorgone On April the 5th of 2021, 54-year-old Denise Williams was fatally stabbed after agreeing to meet Facebook marketplace seller Joshua Gorgone in Geistown, Pennsylvania. 26-year-old Gorgone had listed a refrigerator for $160 on the social media marketplace and had reportedly received an offer from Williams. The latter's family reported her missing after she failed to arrive home after work on the day of her agreed-upon meeting with the seller. Investigators were able to use her cell phone's GPS to triangulate her location. They found Williams's abandoned car with no signs of the woman herself. Her family allowed detectives access to her social media accounts, which led to the discovery of her conversation with the would-be seller. Williams had intended to buy the fridge as a gift for her boyfriend. Upon arriving at the suspect's home, officers came upon the victim's body in the bathroom. Gorgon was arrested and immediately confessed, explaining how they'd begun arguing over the fridge's price and that he'd lost his temper, at which point 
He grabbed a knife and stabbed Williams multiple times. He was held in custody without bail while awaiting trial. An autopsy revealed several defensive wounds on Williams' body indicating that she'd fought back against her assailant before ultimately succumbing to his attack. Number 4. Daphne Ann Crawford On May the 24th of 2016, 29-year-old Daphne Ann Crawford and her 28-year-old husband, Alan, began making violent online threats following an incident at Mel's Diner in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It wasn't immediately made clear what the initial altercation centered around. However, when a customer made a Facebook post about the incident at the restaurant, Crawford replied, threatening to shoot them and their family. She also posted intimidating messages directed towards the establishment's employees, adding pictures of her husband holding an assault rifle and dressed in Middle Eastern attire, explaining they'd converted to Islam. Crawford was arrested and charged with making threats in the first degree. Her husband was also taken into custody on unrelated charges following a joint investigation by Fayetteville police and the FBI in connection to possession of illicit substances and firearms. Officers conducted a search of the Crawford household and discovered three AR-15 rifles, a 12-gauge shotgun, several handguns and over 2,000 rounds of ammunition. Allen, also known by the name Omar Usman Khalid, was held without bond and considered a flight risk after authorities discovered he had closed ties in Maryland, Oklahoma and North Africa. Number 3. Andrew McDonald Over the course of several weeks in November of 2009, Massachusetts resident Andrew McDonald engaged in several heated arguments over Facebook with an unidentified 24-year-old man. The two parties eventually agreed to parlay their dispute into an in-person meeting. When 19-year-old McDonald arrived at the scene, the two men began brawling. Before the police were called, McDonald reportedly bit the victim's ear clean off. As officers subsequently took him into custody, he seemed unfazed, stating he wouldn't have gotten in so much trouble if he'd knocked the unidentified man out. Friends of the victim recovered ripped portions of his earlobe from the scene and brought them to South Shore Hospital, where he was being treated. It's unknown whether or not the doctors were able to reattach the appendage. McDonald was released on a $10,000 bail pending the continuation of the case. Number 2. Robert Fries 62-year-old Robert Fries, a resident of Exeter, New Hampshire, was arrested on May the 23rd of 2018 after making defamatory posts about local police chief Bill Shoup. Fries was charged with criminal defamation of character, a Class B misdemeanor, after accusing Shoup of covering up another officer's misconduct without presenting evidence. The charges were dropped after the American Civil Liberties Union got involved, labeling the arrest as an attempt to silence criticism of authority. Fries filed a wrongful arrest lawsuit later that year and on February the 8th of 2021 was awarded a settlement of $17,500. Number 1. Marcelino Santiago Lopez Minnesota resident Marcelino Santiago Lopez murdered Brandon Jose Neves on April 2nd of 2020 following an online dispute over a woman with whom they were both romantically involved. 19-year-old Lopez had threatened to kill Neves several times in the weeks prior to the attack and had eventually challenged his love rival to a fight. The young man met with 20-year-old Neves, who was accompanied by an unidentified teenager. During the ensuing altercation, Lopez reportedly shot both of them before fleeing the scene. Emergency services rushed to the South St. Paul address after concerned neighbors called 911. Neves, who'd been shot in the head, was pronounced dead, but his underage companion managed to make a full recovery after being brought to the hospital. Later that night, Lopez reached out to the authorities himself and willingly confessed to committing the shooting, but alleged that he'd been acting in self-defense. According to his testimony, he'd felt threatened after a group of men had surrounded him and began shooting to scare them off. Nevertheless, he was arrested and indicted on first-degree murder charges as well as counts of attempted murder and assault. One year later, Lopez was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. An additional 14 years were later added to his sentence for the attempted murder of the second victim. Number 8. Jayana Tanay Webb 
Pennsylvania state troopers responded to a call about a man walking along the southbound passing lane of Interstate 95 in Philadelphia on March the 21st of 2022. The two officers later named as Martin Mack and Brandon Siska were reportedly escorting the individual to their patrol car when all three of them were suddenly struck by an oncoming vehicle. The collision sent the men over the median and into the path of northbound traffic. Emergency medical personnel rushed to the scene, but both the officers and the man they'd been assisting were pronounced dead a short time later. The driver of the vehicle that had hit them was taken into police custody and charged with over a dozen counts, including third-degree murder. The suspect, identified as 21-year-old Jayana Tanay Webb, reportedly had a blood alcohol content of more than twice the legal driving limit at the time of the fatal crash. In the aftermath of her arrest, it emerged that she'd previously boasted about driving while intoxicated on her Twitter profile. In a post uploaded about two months prior to the incident, Webb had written, If you ask me, I'm the best drunk driver ever. She was denied bail during an arraignment hearing held the day after her arrest. Number 7. Dakari McCainoff in March of 2014, Los Angeles police were made aware of an alarming social media post uploaded to a Twitter account that belonged to 20-year-old local man Dakari McCainoff. He had posted a picture of a rifle being pointed out of a window in the direction of city streets. The caption reportedly read, 100 retweets and I'll shoot someone walking. McCainoff subsequently posted a second tweet with a photograph depicting a man bleeding on the ground as a police car approached the scene although it was later determined that the picture had been fabricated and no one had actually been harmed. The LAPD was able to find the location at which the picture had been taken, tracking it to an apartment in the 700 block of 9th Street in the city's downtown area. Upon searching McCainer's residence, investigators discovered the weapon shown in a Twitter post, which was ultimately determined to be an air rifle. Following McCainer's arrest, the social media post was taken down by Twitter and his account was suspended indefinitely. According to subsequent updates on the case, investigators had learned that McCainer's series of threatening social media posts had been part of an elaborate prank devised by him and his friends. The young man was eventually released without charges being pursued. Number 6. Mahek Bukhari a car chase in Leicestershire, England ended with cousins Mohammed Hashim Ijazuddin and Saqib Hussein being driven off the road by a group of three women on February the 11th of 2022. The pier's vehicle was reported to have been ripped in half as a result of the crash and they were both pronounced dead at the scene. Local police arrested TikTok star Mahek Bukhari, her mother and another woman who was named as Natasha Akhtar in connection to the deadly incident. 22-year-old Bukhari a fashion influencer with a social media following of over 128,000 uploaded a darkly ironic video to her TikTok account about a month prior to her arrest. During the clip in question, Bakari was shown casually confessing that she'd killed someone to which another user responded by saying that they loved her anyway. According to the BBC, the trial associated with the case was scheduled to begin in September of 2022. Number 5. Eliza Alder Two days after she'd arrived in Honolulu in May of 2020, Arizona resident Eliza Alder started posting photographs of herself on various beaches in Lae and Haula to her social media accounts. At the time, Hawaii had a strict 14-day self-quarantine order in place for all visitors, which 18-year-old Alder had openly defied by traveling across the state. Local police were notified of Alder's social media posts and she was consequently arrested for violating the state's COVID-19 mandates. It subsequently emerged that in addition to her beach trips, the teen had been working at a restaurant in Lae. It meant that Alder had been in contact with others during the period in which state regulations stipulated that she should have been quarantining by herself. Officers showed up at the restaurant to take Alder into custody on May the 20th. She faced charges of violating the state's quarantine rule and unsworn falsification to authority, and her bail was reportedly set at $2,000. Number 4. Amy Hill Ella In October of 2020, the Hansville Police Department in Alabama was alerted to a social media post made by a local resident who claimed that his wife and children had been approached by three men who threatened to kidnap them. The alleged incident was said to have occurred while 23-year-old Amy Hill Ella and her kids were out shopping in the Coleman County city of Hansville. Ella's husband described the purported kidnapping plot in a social media post that subsequently went viral. 
The Post detailed how the Ellers had contacted the police to file an official report of the incident and that an officer had since followed up with them. Suspicions began to arise after the Hansfield police publicly stated that they hadn't received a call about Ellers' supposed run-in with kidnappers, as the widely shared social media post had suggested. The following morning, the couple went to the police station to file a report, which they claimed had already been done, and an official investigation into Ellers' claims was consequently launched. Detectives reviewed video surveillance footage, phone records, and GPS tracking information in their efforts to corroborate that the alleged incident had in fact occurred. Investigators ultimately determined that there was no evidence to substantiate Ella's claims and they subsequently issued a warrant for her arrest. She was taken into police custody and charged with false reporting to law enforcement. Number three, Lorraine Graves. On the night of March the 13th of 2021, Oklahoma man Eric Graves, aged 30, was fatally shot inside an apartment in Tulsa. Upon their arrival at the scene, local police reportedly found a second victim who'd sustained a non-fatal gunshot wound to the arm. Law enforcement launched an investigation into the shooting which ultimately led them to arrest a pair of suspects, identified as brothers Jaden and Gabriel Hobson. On July the 14th of 2021, the Tulsa Police Department uploaded a Facebook post in which they asked the public for information regarding the whereabouts of 24-year-old Lorraine Graves. Although it wasn't reported how the latter was related to the shooting victim or what she was specifically accused of doing, the Post did detail how she'd been identified as a suspect in the ongoing investigation and was being charged with accessory to murder. Shortly after the Post was uploaded, Graves commented on it herself, glibly asking about the potential reward money for her capture. Within 24 hours of her taunting reply, Investigators tracked her location and took her into custody. Subsequent reports indicated that Graves' bond was set at $500,000. Number 2. Tara Fears On September the 27th of 2018, Instagram influencer and former Miss Baghdad Tara Fears was gunned down in broad daylight while driving her Porsche through Iraq's capital city. As shown by CCTV footage, 22-year-old Fears had been shot three times through her car window by a gunman, who subsequently fled the scene on a motorcycle. The former beauty queen was taken to a hospital where she was ultimately pronounced dead a short time later. In the wake of the incident, there was widespread speculation as to the true circumstances behind the influential young woman's killing, with the overarching narrative being that it had been part of an assassination plot. Iraq's interior minister stated that the individuals responsible for the shooting were members of an extremist group who had received dishonorable discharges from different armed factions. Many people rejected the government's determination regarding the motive for Fierce's murder, and it was theorized that she'd been targeted due to her outspoken stance on freedom and religion. The young woman, who had more than 2.6 million social media followers at the time of her death, had an online presence that was perceived as provocative. She regularly posted pictures of herself in scantily clad outfits that showcased her various tattoos. Fears' social media posts openly challenged long-standing cultural norms present in Iraqi society, and many therefore believed that she was killed by elements who didn't approve of what would have been regarded as taboo behavior. Some even suggested that the assassination had possibly been orchestrated at the behest of Iraqi leadership. Number 1. Daryl Brooks Jr. Daryl Brooks Jr. made international headlines with his shocking attack on the Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin on November the 21st of 2021. He drove an SUV directly into a crowd of dozens of parade goers at approximately 40 miles per hour, killing six and injuring 62 others. Brooks, aged 36 at the time, was arrested and charged with six counts of first degree intentional homicide and an additional 77 other charges in connection to the unprompted onslaught. Shortly after news of the tragedy circulated online, several disturbing posts from Brooks' social media profiles emerged as well. The man had previously written a number of social media posts in which he openly and repeatedly called for violence against white people. In an upload from June of 2020, Brooks encouraged his followers to knock white people out and also voiced his support for the controversial group known as the Black Hebrew Israelites. The police reported that each of Brooks' six victims were in fact white, leading many to extrapolate that his attack on the Waukesha parade had been racially motivated. Brooks' initial trial took place in February of 2022, with the defendant pleading not guilty to all charges levied against him. The defense team filed a motion for the trial to be held in a different Wisconsin county, arguing that it would be difficult to find an impartial jury in Waukesha, given that many local residents knew people directly affected by the attack. 
The legal proceedings were ultimately rescheduled for October of 2022, although the new trial's venue hadn't been selected as of the latest updates on the matter. Number 9. Lauren Marie Dooley On September the 28th of 2022, Lauren Marie Dooley tortured a 21-year-old man she'd met on Tinder after restraining him with duct tape in her Colorado apartment. The victim's name was redacted from the affidavit released to the public in order to preserve his privacy. He indicated that he and 22-year-old Dooley had been intimate with one another in the moments before she tied him up to her bed. He reluctantly consented, but the situation quickly escalated to violence. Once he was restrained, Dooley began slashing him with a knife and choked him when he protested. Following the assault, she reportedly ordered food, threatening to kill her victim if he attempted to alert the delivery driver. After Dooley fell asleep, the man managed to break free from his restraints and fled the apartment fully naked. His captor chased after him and concerned neighbors called 911. When the police arrived at the scene, they discovered bloody rags and sheets, as well as the knife she'd used during the attack. The victim was taken to the hospital and treated for his non-life-threatening injuries, while Dooley was taken into custody and charged with second-degree kidnapping and assault. Number 8. Ashiri Gadsden A 21-year-old South Carolina resident participated in the murder of Alan Philpian Johnson III following a robbery gone wrong on January the 9th of 2022. Ashiri Gadsden had initially met the 24-year-old victim on Tinder. She formulated a plot to trick the young man into allowing her into his house, along with her accomplices Joshua Latre Mack, aged 28, and Zora Simone Henderson, aged 19. The ill-intentioned trio eventually killed the homeowner, after which a heavily intoxicated Gadsden contacted the police and waited for them in the driveway. She led them into the victim's apartment, where officers came upon Johnson's lifeless body. An autopsy would later reveal that he'd been shot four times during the home invasion. Officers arrested Gadsden, who initially claimed that she'd had nothing to do with the crime. During questioning, she told detectives that she'd heard a gunshot while in the bathroom and rushed into the living room to discover her date lying unresponsive on the ground. However, detectives discovered deleted messages in the suspect's cell phone that implicated her involvement. Gadsden finally confessed to plotting the robbery but claimed that Mac had been the one to shoot Johnson after the latter had attempted to disarm him. Number 7. Luis Savondo Almanza, Aranana, Mornin Martinez and Sierra Petit In September of 2021, an unidentified man was held hostage for several hours by Luis Savondo Almanza, Aranana, Mornin Martinez and Sierra Petit following an ill-fated Tinder date. The trio, aged between 19 and 26 at the time, invited the victim to a house party in Oklahoma City. After he asked to be paid back for the drinks he'd purchased for the group, tensions escalated and violence ensued. Almanza, Martinez and Petit held the man captive, threatening him with a 12-gauge shotgun and a knife. He was forced into a car and the suspects drove him to several stores, using his bank cards to purchase various items, including clothes. They also allegedly destroyed the man's phone in order to keep him from calling for help. Before eventually releasing him, the three suspects threatened to harm him and his family if he contacted the authorities. The victim decided to report the incident nonetheless. The police subsequently arrested Almanza, Martinez and Petit on charges of kidnapping and aggravated robbery. Number 6. Mika Ort Mika Ort, a 21-year-old woman attending university in the Netherlands, was murdered by a Tinder date turned stalker on March the 8th of 2022. Ort, who was born to a Dutch father, had traveled from Massachusetts to Leeuwarden in 2020 in order to pursue her studies. She went on several dates with a 27-year-old man identified only as Thomas R., whom she'd met on the dating app before eventually deciding to rekindle her relationship with ex-boyfriend Michael Van Der Waal. Refusing to accept the young woman's rejection, Thomas tracked her down, placed a GPS device on her bike, and broke into her apartment. He proceeded to fatally stab Ort, also wounding two other men who were at the house at the time of the attack. Thomas fled the scene in the aftermath but was later turned into the authorities by his parents. 
Number 5. Jordan Cobold. Jordan Cobold, a 21-year-old resident of Suffolk, England, trashed Alicia Moy's apartment after she ended their Tinder romance on April the 9th of 2021. The couple had been dating for a month when Moy, aged 20 at the time, decided that they weren't a good match. Cobalt became irate and took the young woman's spare key in retaliation. Moy explained the breakup by expressing her belief that he'd grown too intense and needy. After she ended their relationship over text message, Cobalt blocked her number and waited until she left for work to enter her apartment. The scorned lover poured beans and spaghetti into her shoes, painted the walls with condiments and covered the vacuum cleaner with cooking sauce. Cobalt also severed cables on each of Moy's kitchen appliances, turned off the refrigerator's power and threw cooking oil on the floor. The young man was arrested after his ex contacted the authorities about his infantile actions. In January of 2022, he accepted a plea deal in connection to charges of criminal damage and burglary. Cobalt was consequently ordered to serve 180 hours of community service, as well as two years of probation. He was also forced to pay his victim $1,750 in restitution and was forbidden from making any form of contact with Moy for five years. Number 4. Levante Stuckey on July the 9th of 2022, Levante Stuckey attempted to assault his Tinder date, holding her at gunpoint in the garage of a Las Vegas hotel. The woman, whose identity wasn't made public, agreed to a meet-up with Stuckey and got into his car, at which point he locked the doors and allegedly became violent. The man forced his victim into the back seat, demanding she perform intimate acts while threatening her with a firearm. During the course of the altercation, the woman somehow managed to use her phone to contact a friend who helped her escape from the assailant's vehicle. Stucky then sped away from the scene, hitting two other cars in the process. The two women contacted the authorities, providing them with Stucky's license plate number, which eventually led to his arrest. He was charged with kidnapping and his bail was set at $10,000. Number three, Sierra Wayman. Kentucky teen Sierra Wayman set up a meeting with Covington resident Peyton Browning over Tinder, secretly plotting to extort money from him. On September the 8th of 2020, Wayman invited Browning over to her house. Minutes after he arrived, two strangers knocked on the door. One of them was later identified as 19-year-old Philip Snyder, while the second man wasn't identified to the public. They attempted to assault Browning, who was carrying a weapon and shot at his attackers in self-defense. Police subsequently arrived at the scene after having been contacted by Browning himself, and the two assailants were taken to the ER with non-fatal gunshot wounds. 19-year-old Wayman was taken to the Kenton County Jail on robbery charges. Her bond was set at $5,000 by the judge presiding over her case. Number two, Joshua Hamblett, Sashwana Wilkins, and Keegan Profet. In 2019, 23-year-olds Joshua Hamblett and Sashwana Wilkins, along with 19-year-old Keegan Profet, were arrested in Ontario, Canada, after attempting to traffic a woman they'd met on Tinder. The woman who chose to remain anonymous told the police that she'd agreed to meet one of the suspects in a hotel room, but the man became violent once they were alone. It suspected that Profet was the individual in charge of making initial contact with the victim, although his accomplices arrived at the hotel room shortly thereafter. After taking lewd pictures of the woman and uploading them online, the trio offered her services on the ad listing site, Leo List. Hamlet, Wilkins, and Profet pressured her into performing escort services by threatening her family if she refused. They also confiscated the money she received during her appointments. The two 23-year-olds were arrested on December the 1st of 2019, while Profet managed to elude capture until the 18th. They were each charged with over a dozen combined offenses, including assault, making threats and human trafficking. Police suspected the group of targeting other women with similar schemes and urged any of their past victims to come forward. Number 1. Jose Sandoval Juarez and Crystal Halsey Jose Sandoval Juarez, 32, and Crystal Halsey, 33, 
were accused of catfishing a man on Tinder in order to carry out a robbery on September the 17th of 2022, when the unnamed victim showed up for a date with a woman he knew only as Sonia at a hotel room in Phoenix, Arizona. The two suspects allegedly held him at gunpoint, demanding his cell phone and bank account information. The man was then forced to drive his assailants to a nearby bank, where he withdrew $900 from his account. Juarez and Halsey subsequently took off on their own and managed to withdraw $3,000 more before the bank cards were reported stolen and deactivated. Detectives assigned to the case discovered that the couple had booked the hotel room using their real names, leading to their arrest on September the 28th. The suspects led police on a high-speed chase through several cities driving on the wrong side of the road and attempting to carjack another vehicle before finally being apprehended. They were indicted for assault and armed robbery with a deadly weapon as well as several other charges as they awaited the continuation of their case's legal proceedings. Number 7. Adrian Fry In 2016, Minnesota teen Alexis Stern sparked up an online relationship with a man by the name of Adrian Fry, a 20-year-old British accountant in training who regularly streamed video games online. The couple maintained an entirely internet-based relationship for the next two years. Then in March of 2018, Fry reportedly flew from England to Big Lake, Minnesota, and rented a room at a hotel near Stern's house. During the course of their first in-person meetup, the young woman broke up with Fry citing his increasingly controlling behavior. Four months later, a dark web user named Mastermind365 contacted a secretive assassin for hire service called Kamora Hitman, expressing his interest in arranging a kidnapping. A week later, Mastermind365 indicated that he'd changed his mind since his initial inquiry and instead sought to have their intended target murdered. The user subsequently transferred $5,000 in Bitcoin to the dark web contractor, along with a picture of Alexis Stern. The authorities eventually caught wind of the situation and Stern was brought into the Big Lake Police Department, where she was briefed about the details of the threat made against her. The young woman immediately suggested that the individual behind the hit was Fry, who had become upset after she told him she was seeing another man. Fry categorically denied his ex's accusations and as of the latest developments, no one from the FBI had reached out to him. Stern has maintained her belief that Fry was behind the murder for hire plot while investigating the matter for CBS's 48 Hours program. Journalists took note of a subtle but startling detail. During their dark web communications, Mastermind365 had written the words thank you as one continuous word. When CBS reached out to Fry for comment on their news story, he declined but thanked them for the opportunity writing thank you as one word, in the same manner as Stern's internet stalker. Number 6. Tina Jones Within two years of the start of her marriage, Illinois nurse Tina Jones began having an affair with one of her co-workers, who also happened to be married. At some point, however, Jones's lover broke things off between them, prompting her to seek revenge via the dark web. DuPage County prosecutors alleged that the jilted woman contacted the dark web-based organization known as Sicilian Hitmen International Network to orchestrate the murder of her ex-lover's wife. During the course of her online interactions with the prospective hitmen, Jones reportedly provided the intended target's address and photograph with instructions not to harm her husband. Over a three-month period, the woman paid $12,000 in Bitcoin to cover the cost of the assassination. In April of 2018, however, Woodridge police received a tip about the sinister scheme and confronted Jones, who openly confessed to her crimes. It subsequently emerged that the company she'd contacted on the dark web was actually a scam and didn't provide murder for hire services as was promised. Jones ultimately faced several criminal charges, including attempted first-degree murder as well as solicitation of murder and was held in custody on a $250,000 bond. In the summer of 2019, she reached a plea deal with prosecutors. As part of the bargain, Jones pleaded guilty to attempted murder in exchange for the other charges being dropped. During her sentence in hearing, she received 12 years imprisonment as punishment, in addition to having to pay several thousands of dollars in fines and 
restitution payments. Number five, Jason Bell, Melissa Losher, and Charles Puff. Shortly before 9 p.m. on May the 17th of 2022, the police in Topeka, Kansas, pulled over a red Chevy Malibu in the 3600 block of Southwest Topeka Boulevard for an alleged traffic violation. During the course of the supposedly routine traffic stop, officers discovered that the driver, 47-year-old Jason Bell, had a warrant out for his arrest. Furthermore, Shawnee County deputies found drugs and various counterfeit items inside the vehicle. Among the materials recovered were fake ID cards, bank cards, reams of fake checks, notebooks full of personal information, as well as instructions on how to access people's information via the dark web. Bell was arrested and charged with possession with intent to distribute, 18 counts of identity theft, 10 counts of forgery, 27 counts of possession of stolen property, 3 counts of counterfeiting, and 1 count of counterfeiting U.S. currency. The Shawnee County Drug Enforcement Task Force subsequently executed a search warrant in the 900 block of Northeast Monroe Street, leading to the discovery of even more drugs, as well as weapons. As a result of the search, investigators also arrested 44-year-old Charles Puffin, Melissa Losher, aged 23 in connection to Bell's dark web operation. Number four, C.G. Liu. Between February the 15th and March the 5th of 2019, a 37-year-old Winnipeg woman was in contact with an individual operating on the dark web about illegally obtaining a chemical weapon for reasons that weren't revealed to the public. The woman identified as C.G. Liu reportedly placed an order for 10 milliliters of an unidentified toxin, as well as various pieces of protective equipment in order to handle the chemical safely. On March the 5th, Liu traveled south to Pembina, North Dakota, where she was instructed to pick up her illicit package. She presented a Nexus ID card to Border Patrol agents and indicated that she was going shopping for the day in Grand Forks. Her white Subaru Forester subsequently arrived at the parcel pickup location, where she reportedly provided a fake name, Julie Chen. She picked up six packages for her fictitious Julie Chen character and one package for C.G. Liu, whom she described as a friend of hers. Shortly thereafter, Liu was intercepted by law enforcement agents who brought her to Homeland Security for questioning. She admitted to her misdeeds, plainly stating to officers, I know what I did was wrong. The authorities had been well aware of Liu's illegal transaction as the individual with whom she'd communicated on the dark web was actually an undercover FBI agent. In June of 2020, the woman pleaded guilty to one count of attempting to acquire a chemical weapon, which led to two other charges getting dismissed. She consequently faced a prison term of six years as punishment. Number three, Kelly Harper. In December of 2020, Wisconsin woman Kelly Harper attempted to orchestrate the murder of her ex-husband by way of the dark web. According to official documents on the matter, the woman, in her late 30s at the time, got in contact with a dark web-based operation that allegedly offered murder for hire services to its prospective clientele. Between the 3rd and 10th of December, Harper was found to have been in communication with the illicit site's administrator under the online alias Malik 8, referring to her ex as the target. The murderous plot was ultimately foiled by journalists with the BBC, who'd been working on an investigation into the inner workings of the dark web when they stumbled upon Harper's name and what she was planning. The police in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin, were notified of the situation on January the 12th of 2021. Investigators subsequently obtained evidence that Harper had wired an undisclosed sum of cryptocurrency to her dark web contact as payment for the hit. Images of the intended victim that had been sent to the dark website's administrator were also recovered during a search of Harper's residence. In early February, the woman was taken into custody on a charge of solicitation of murder. In the wake of her arrest, it emerged that Harper and her ex-husband had been in the midst of a contentious divorce at the time she devised her murder plot. She had reportedly levied accusations of abuse on the man, which were later found to be unsubstantiated, and he was never charged. 
In October of 2021, Harper pleaded guilty to her murder solicitation charge and was consequently sentenced to six years in prison. Number two, David Mitchell. A Scottish man was found to have communicated with US-based dark web entities about the purchase of a firearm between September the 17th and 19th of 2018. Court records indicated that 48-year-old David Mitchell spent more than 2,000 units of cryptocurrency to pay for an illicit package containing a fully operational Glock handgun, a silencer, and ammunition. The items were eventually intercepted by US border officials, who noted that the package had been addressed to Mitchell at his office in Dunfermline, Fife. A sting operation was then put into motion by Scotland's organized crime partnership, which sent a dummy package to Mitchell in the real one's stead. A subsequent search of the man's Edinburgh home culminated with his arrest. While in custody, Mitchell claimed not to have had ill intentions for the illegal weapon, but simply sought to circumvent Scottish and US authorities. In December of 2018, the man admitted three firearms offences during a hearing in Edinburgh High Court. The following month, the presiding judge handed down a sentence of five years behind bars for his crimes. Number 1. Chloe Aylin A 20-year-old British model was kidnapped after arriving in Milan for a photo shoot on July the 11th of 2017. According to the Italian state police, Chloe Aileen was accosted by a criminal gang who dosed her with ketamine. Before assaulting her and locking her in a suitcase for several hours, she was held in captivity for six days, during which time her kidnapper allegedly attempted to sell her to the highest bidder on the dark web. To stop the twisted auction from happening, the captors demanded ransom from Ailing's agent. Fortunately, on July the 17th, the model was released before any ransom was paid, and she was subsequently taken to the British consulate in Milan. In the aftermath, investigators arrested 30-year-old Polish national Lukas Paul Herber in connection to Ailing's horrifying ordeal. The suspect claimed to be part of the so-called Black Death Group, an organization that specializes in illegal trafficking via the dark web. He reportedly admitted to being involved in previous online auctions to sell abducted women. Ailing told investigators that at some point while she was imprisoned, one of her captors said in English that their boss was upset about the fact that she had a child, as it was against the group's policy to sell mothers. The authorities have speculated that Ailing's motherhood was why she was ultimately released. In court, Herber claimed that the model had been in on the kidnapping in a ploy to ease her financial burdens, an accusation she vehemently denied. In the end, Herber was sentenced to 16 years and nine months behind bars. Number seven, Hakan Aik. Born in Australia to Turkish parents in 1979, Hakan Aik had a checkered childhood marred by the death of his father rampant drug addiction within his immediate family and his cousin and brother at one point being sent to prison. By the early 2000s, Ayik was operating a large-scale criminal empire that was said to have close ties to the Comanchero motorcycle gang. His various legal exploits included drug importation, cooperation with the Samgor Chinese triad, as well as partnering with corrupt customs officials and jail officers in Australia and Tonga. In 2010, Ike became known as the Facebook gangster because of his proclivity to flaunt the trappings of his lavish lifestyle on social media. The man became the subject of an Interpol red notice in August of that year, and after briefly being taken into custody in Cyprus, he fled from justice upon posting bail. As he furthered his illicit endeavors, Ayik garnered a reputation as a prolific cybercriminal and was attributed with introducing the encrypted communications platform Phantom Secure to the world of organized crime. In 2018, the cybersecurity company was shut down by the FBI and Australian Federal Police. In Ayik's subsequent attempt to find a new encrypted messaging app for him and his criminal constituents, he inadvertently aided the FBI in what became known as the Anum Sting Operation. An undercover agent had reportedly given Ayik access to a bait platform known as Anom, which had a backdoor intentionally installed for American and Australian law enforcement. 
believing the app to be legitimate, the notorious cybercriminal distributed it to his contacts, which ultimately led to the arrest of more than 800 suspects across 16 countries. In the wake of the Alum fiasco, which reportedly caused Ike to become a target of certain members of the international criminal element, he moved to Turkey, where he began operating the King's Cross Hotel in Istanbul. He's allegedly taken steps to distance himself from his previous Facebook gangster persona. Having undergone plastic surgery to alter his facial appearance, Ayek, who is described as Australia's most wanted man, has an estimated net worth of approximately $1.5 billion. As of the latest updates on the matter, Ayek had been indicted by the FBI as part of a RICO conspiracy case, which, if he were to be convicted, would result in him being sent to prison for up to 20 years. Number 6. Gosnim Criminal Network in May of 2019, the FBI, along with other global law enforcement partners, apprehended a so-called cyber kingpin who masterminded a malware scam in an attempt to steal upwards of $100 million. A Justice Department press release detailed how Alexander Konovalov and his alleged accomplice, Marat Kazanjian, had used Gosnim malware to hack into Windows PCs and obtain people's bank account information. The Gosnim software reportedly infected computers belonging to tens of thousands of victims worldwide, primarily in the US and Europe. The cybercriminal network had initially been formed after Konovalov and Kazanjian advertised their specialized technical skills and services on underground Russian language criminal forums. In addition to the two main suspects, five Russian hackers were alleged to have taken part in the multi-million dollar scheme, but as of subsequent updates, they remained at large. Number 5. Ruja Ignatova Bulgarian-German fraudster Ruja Ignatova gained international notoriety for perpetrating the Ponzi scheme known as OneCoin. Described as one of the biggest scams in history, Ignatova started OneCoin back in 2014, promoting it as a cryptocurrency that was centralized on servers hosted by a Bulgaria-based offshore company in Dubai. The business's primary method of generating revenue was the sale of educational material for trading. The packages offered to members ranged in price from $100 to over $200,000, according to one industry blog. The contents of OneCoin's educational literature were said to have been more than questionable, as they allegedly plagiarized numerous other sources. Ignatova's company attracted suspicions from international law enforcement almost instantly as she had previously been given a suspended jail sentence in connection to a financial fraud she had committed with her father in 2012. The following year, she had gotten involved with a multi-level marketing scam called Bitcoin before founding her purported cryptocurrency venture a year later. In 2017, Ignatova vanished. Shortly after, arrest warrants were filed in secret for her and her brother Constantine. Following her sudden disappearance, Constantine took over his cyber criminal sister's position as the head of OneCoin, before ultimately being taken into custody along with Sebastian Greenwood, another of the company's executives. Prosecutors claimed that OneCoin had brought in upwards of $4 billion in illegally obtained funds. While it was in operation, Constantine eventually pleaded guilty to charges of money laundering and fraud, while Ignatova herself remained on the run. The woman was charged in absentia for wire fraud, securities fraud, and money laundering, and in the summer of 2022 was added to the FBI's most wanted list. Ignatova was last seen boarding a flight from Bulgaria to Greece in 2017, and as of the latest developments, her current whereabouts were still unknown. Number 4. International ATM Heist In early 2016, Europol began investigating a European-based cybercriminal gang suspected of stealing millions of dollars from ATMs through the use of malware. The following year, law enforcement entities from Europe and Asia arrested five alleged members of the group, which had swindled approximately $3 million from 22 individuals across six different countries. It was detailed how the cybercriminals had used phishing emails containing malicious attachments to target bank employees and penetrate the internal networks of the financial institutions they victimized. The gang then hacked into the ATM networks, siphoned the money from unsuspecting patrons' accounts, 
and used malware to delete all traces of their activities. Three of the gangsters, Andres Peregudovs, Nikolai Penkov and Mikhail Kolibaba, were taken into the custody of the Taiwanese Criminal Investigation Bureau and faced sentences of five years in prison for the predatory scheme. One of the remaining suspects was arrested by the Romanian National Police, while the other was detained by the Belarusian Central Office of the Investigative Committee. A court decreed that the individuals involved in the international cyber heist would be extradited back to their native countries following the conclusion of their prison terms. Number 3. Andy Castillo on January the 6th of 2020, the police in Lubbock, Texas, arrested a man accused of targeting children in a cyber-stalking operation. The suspect, Andy Castillo, who was in his 50s at the time, contacted about a half-dozen female real estate agents from the Waco area. He allegedly sent the victims explicit photographs as well as pictures of their children that he'd taken from social media sites with graphic descriptions of inappropriate acts being performed on them. Castillo used encrypted messaging apps to conceal the phone numbers from which the threatening texts were sent. Investigators indicated that the man eventually slipped up, allowing authorities to identify him as the cyber stalker. He was taken into custody on charges of criminal solicitation to commit aggravated assault of a child and third-degree felony stalking following his arrest. Castillo's DNA was uploaded to a national law enforcement database which led to him being identified as a suspect in two previously unsolved murder cases. In 2003, the partially unclothed body of Cynthia Palacio had been found along a rural road in Lubbock. The following year, a second woman, Linda Carbajal, was found dead on a dirt road in northern Lubbock County. The authorities matched evidence recovered from the original crime scenes to Castillo's DNA, and he was consequently indicted for capital murder while awaiting trial Castillo was found dead in his jail cell after reportedly succumbing to complications stemming from COVID-19. Number 2. Zane Kaiser A prolific cybercriminal infected hundreds of millions of computers with ransomware between September of 2012 and December of 2018 when he was remanded into custody after a National Crime Agency investigation. 24-year-old Zane Kaiser was an alleged member of a Russian-speaking organized crime group that unleashed a campaign of malware and blackmail on victims from more than 20 different countries around the world. For his role in the scheme, Kaiser was said to have collected at least $800,000. Although the exact figure is thought to be much higher, he used the illegally obtained funds to bankroll an extravagant lifestyle, replete with luxury hotel stays, high-end escorts, drugs, and big money gambling excursions. Kaiser reportedly targeted prospective victims by purchasing mass quantities of advertising traffic on adult film websites. He used fake identities and fraudulent companies to make it appear as though he worked for a legitimate online advertising agency. When users clicked on the ads created by the cybercrime group, they'd be redirected to a website hosting a highly sophisticated malware strain that would infect any vulnerable devices. Those who found themselves victimized by the predatory ads would then be blackmailed by Kaiser and his criminal associates. The gang requested ransom payment through a virtual currency that would then be laundered by way of an international network of illegitimate financial service providers. Kaiser pleaded guilty to 11 counts, including blackmail, fraud, money laundering, and computer misuse. Following a sentencing hearing at Kingston Crown Court, the hacker was jailed for six years and five months. Number 1. Jeremy Hammond In 2003, Chicago team Jeremy Hammond founded the computer security training website Hack This Site, which described itself as a non-profit organization aimed at protecting a good security culture and learning atmosphere. Two years later, Hammond was involved in a joint effort to hack the pro-war political activist group Protest Warrior. As part of the cyber attack, the hacker accessed thousands of credit card numbers. Although no unauthorized charges were made with the illegally obtained information, Hammond was sent to prison for two years for the crime. 
The young man's second run-in with law enforcement came in 2013, when he was arrested on computer fraud charges for hacking the private geopolitical intelligence company Stratfor and releasing confidential data to WikiLeaks. Hammond's cyber attacks reportedly victimized not only the firm itself, but also other law enforcement agencies and thousands of innocent individuals. Despite his reputation as one of the world's premier hackers, Hammond later told the Associated Press that the FBI was able to track him down because he used a really weak password. The password in question was Chewy123, in reference to his cat named Chewy. Hammond consequently faced a 10-year prison term of which he served seven years before his release in November of 2020. Number 7. Yale Gerstein Yale Gerstein, a 19-year-old college student from Austin, Texas, was on a video call with his girlfriend, Bailey Luciani, on October the 23rd of 2016 when he heard a knock on his apartment door. He went to open it, at which point three armed men burst into his home and started striking him repeatedly. Luciani, who was in Dallas at the time, witnessed her boyfriend being held at gunpoint, saw the attackers as they were pistol-whipping him and heard them threatening to shoot him. While one of the men was holding Gerstein down on his bed, the other two went through his apartment, searching for valuables to steal. As the home invasion unfolded, Luciani asked her father to call 911, while she took screenshots of the video call to show the police, hoping they'd thus be able to identify her boyfriend's attackers. Eventually, one of the robbers unplugged the computer and the call ended abruptly. Gerstein later told a media outlet that one of the intruders then stomped on his head and threatened to kill him if he followed them before leaving with thousands of dollars worth of music equipment. The teen recalled, I was scared because they were saying, I'm going to blow your head off. Gerstein then watched the robbers flee to the apartment building across the street and drive off in a white Crown Victoria that resembled a police patrol car. Days later, Austin police issued a warrant for the arrest of two teenage suspects, Michael Aylman Jr. and Jacob Carter, believed to have been involved in the robbery. Reports of the incident had been broadcasted through various media outlets along with Luciani's screenshots and Carter's mother contacted the authorities after she'd recognized her son as being one of the attackers. The identity of the third suspect wasn't revealed. Number 6. Sergio Sante. 34-year-old Sergio Sante was heading home down Bonnie Bray Street in downtown Los Angeles, California on the afternoon of April the 8th of 2022. He was on a video call with his brother Douglas, telling him about the plans he had for the upcoming weekend. While he was only three blocks from his home, without warning or provocation, a man wearing a black fisherman hat charged him with a knife and plunged the blade into his neck before running away. The attacker then stabbed two other people and fled the scene. Sante made it around the corner to a storefront and he was rushed to a local hospital. The other two victims hadn't suffered life-threatening injuries, but Sante could not be saved. Police launched a manhunt across Los Angeles, warning citizens the attacker was armed and dangerous. On April the 22nd, detectives located 43-year-old Anthony Madison in Boyle Heights and arrested him in connection to the brutal attack. He was charged by the district attorney's office with one count of murder and two counts of attempted murder. Number 5. Fetty Wap Rapper Willie Jr. Maxwell II, better known by his stage name, Fetty Wap, was taken into custody in the fall of 2021 after the authorities had determined he was a kilo-level drug dealer on Long Island and in New Jersey. At the time of the arrest, the FBI seized about one $1.5 million in cash, along with stacks of pressed cocaine and bags of heroin and fentanyl. Maxwell and five others, including a New Jersey correctional officer, were reported to have been part of a multi-million dollar bi-coastal drug trafficking operation. The group would reportedly buy the drugs in California and transport them in vehicles with hidden compartments across the country. Maxwell was taken into custody while at the Rolling Loud Festival at City Field in Flushing, Queens, and later released on a personal recognizance bond of $500,000. A little over a month from his release, Maxwell violated his bail conditions by threatening a man during a FaceTime call. 
According to an affidavit filed in August of 2022, the rapper brandished a gun during the call and repeatedly told the other man, only identified as John Doe in the document, I'm going to kill you. The latter had accused Maxwell of being a police informant. Prosecutors released an image of their interaction and the rapper was arrested in August for breaching one of the conditions of his bail that stated he must not possess a firearm, destructive device or other weapon. Maxwell's double life as a drug dealer furthered his income as a successful recording artist. He'd collaborated with other big names in the music industry like Drake or Nicki Minaj and in 2015, he became the first rapper to have three top 20 songs on Billboard since Eminem in 2013. Number 4. Lauren Juma On April the 29th, of 2022. Van Brisbane and Lauren Juma, his girlfriend's teenage daughter, were alone at the home they shared in Humble, Texas. Juma's mother, Laurie Young, was away on a work trip at the time at around 1 a.m. The teenager, a student and cheerleader at Nimitz High School video called her mother and her older sister, Carrie Harmon, to tell them that 60-year-old Brisbane was being really weird. She wanted her mother to ask the man to leave her room as she'd woken up to see him standing there in the dark. Young tried telling her boyfriend of five years to stop pestering the teen on the call, but he wouldn't budge. 19-year-old Harmon then agreed to come to the house to help her get out. Upon reaching the address, however, she found that Brisbane was holding Juma captive inside the home. In the meantime, while still on the call with her mother, the teenager screamed, he has a gun, before abruptly hanging up. Young immediately called the police. When Harris County Sheriff's deputies arrived at the scene, minutes later, they heard two gunshots as they were approaching the property. Brisbane then came out of the front door, pulling and adjusting his pants. Deputies took him into custody and charged him with murder after finding Juma's lifeless body inside the house with her clothes in disarray. Prosecutors asked for a test to be performed on the victim to determine if she'd been assaulted. Brisbane's initial bond was set at $1 million, but after the judge heard graphic details found by investigators at the scene, the bond was raised to $2 million. Brisbane, whose motives for the killing remained unclear, faced capital murder charges if test results indicated the victim had been abused before being shot dead. The punishment under Texas law was life without parole or the death sentence. Brisbane also had a record of previous criminal charges in the Phoenix and Chicago areas. Number 3. FaceTime Driver In March of 2018, a woman was filmed having a FaceTime conversation while driving her grey Honda at over 60 miles per hour down the Mitchell Freeway in Perth, Western Australia. Footage of her resting the phone on the steering wheel in front of her face was recorded by a passenger in a passing car. The driver attempted to get the woman's attention by honking repeatedly as they pulled up alongside her. The woman, reported as being in her early 30s, hardly seemed to notice the warnings and carried on with her call. The clip was later posted on social media, where it sparked outrage among viewers. It reached WA Police as well and they managed to track down the driver, the woman who'd reportedly been talking to her boyfriend when the video was captured, was issued a $400 fine accompanied by three demerit points for her reckless conduct behind the wheel. Number 2. William Atkinson 34-year-old William Atkinson asked a friend to drive him to the Best Western Hotel in Somerset, Pennsylvania, on September the 21st of 2021. He'd picked up multiple video calls coming from his wife of three years in which the woman was having relations with another man in a parked car. The Tristan duo allegedly taunted Atkinson during the calls. When the latter arrived at the scene, he became physically violent. Atkinson first struck his wife's lover, who promptly fled, then proceeded to drag her out of the car on the grass behind the vehicle and assault her. The enraged husband allegedly punched and kicked the 32-year-old woman, leaving her with a bloodied nose and mouth as well as severe bruising and marks all over her face. Law enforcement was called to the scene and found the woman crying for help while struggling to breathe. She accused Atkinson of attacking her, but the man only admitted to hitting her with an open hand. He was taken into custody and police recovered one of his blood-soaked shoes from the scene. The 911 caller had reported that Atkinson was actively kicking his wife in the face and also claimed to have heard gunshots. 
Investigators found a 9mm handgun in the van in which Atkinson had traveled, but they didn't find a magazine or rounds inside it, nor at the parking lot. A stun gun and knife were also retrieved from the scene and investigators determined they'd belonged to the woman. She was described by the responding officers as uncooperative and extremely intoxicated. Atkinson was charged with aggravated assault and reckless endangerment and taken to the Somerset County Jail, where he was held on a $30,000 bond. Number 1. Jaden Bird on March 2nd of 2022, at around 11 a.m., Jaden Bird was dropped off by his Lyft driver and proceeded to walk through a parking lot near Whittier Street and North Market in St. Louis, Missouri. He was on his way to meet his mother, Leslie Bird, but the driver had accidentally dropped him off on the wrong side of the building. Jaden was on a call with Leslie when a car pulled up next to him. Someone inside the vehicle shot at Jaden before speeding off. The teenager's mother heard the gunshots and saw the phone drop to the ground but she'd hoped her son had managed to run away. Someone then accidentally kicked the phone and Leslie was able to see Jaden's head roll and his hands curl up after he'd collapsed on the ground. She alerted the authorities and Jaden was taken to a local hospital with multiple gunshot wounds. Doctors were unable to save the 19-year-old, who died shortly after arriving at the medical facility. No arrests were made in the incident's immediate aftermath as police were unable to identify any suspects. Jaden's mother believed the shooting had been a case of mistaken identity, as the attacker had never tried to rob her son. Number 10. Katie Locke On Christmas Eve of 2015, British man Carl Langdell, aged 26, killed teacher Katie Locke, aged 23, and assaulted her dead body at a Hertfordshire hotel. They had met online through the dating site Plenty of Fish and were on their first date. Pathologist Charlotte Randall depicted the assault as powerful and drawn out. Langdell was serving a suspended sentence for threatening to kill two individuals, and Locke was unaware of that aspect. The man was reportedly dated multiple women across multiple websites. According to BBC's report, Langdell had a history with police and mental services. Forensic psychiatrist Dr. Philip Joseph described Langdell as emotionally unstable, adding that he had psychopathic disorders. Langdell pleaded guilty to killing Locke and in 2016 he was jailed for life with a minimum term of 26 years. On February 11, 2021, at Wakefield Prison Maximum Security, Langdell was discovered dead in his cell with severe neck injuries. Number 9. Danielle Finley-Jones on December the 18th of 2022, a 31-year-old teacher at the New South Wales Department of Education, Danielle Finley-Jones was found dead at her friend's Cranebrook home in Western Sydney. She had a bloody nose, distinct finger impressions on the throat and bruising to her face. She'd recently connected with a 33-year-old tradesman, Ashley Gaddy, on a dating app. Police reported that Finley Jones had attended a social event the night before, on December the 17th, and introduced Gaddy as her new partner. Later that night, the pair stayed together at a place belonging to two of the woman's friends. Early on the next day, December the 18th at 3 a.m., one of the residents woke up to what was described as loud, intimate relations between the couple. Police reported that Gaddy left the residence later that morning, until 2.30 p.m. of the same day. Finley Jones' friends hadn't seen the new couple. Shortly afterwards, Finley Jones was found dead, lying on her back on the floor of the bedroom. Despite the fact that emergency personnel were called to the location, the teacher couldn't be revived and was pronounced dead at the scene. Authorities were led to suspect Gaddy based on surveillance footage, forensic evidence, lawful telephone interceptions, and information from witnesses. Following a police operation in Wentworth Falls, Gaddy was arrested at about 12 a.m. According to a statement released by New South Wales Police, he was then transported to the Katoomba police station and charged with murder. Two months later, Gaddy appeared at Penrith local court and the case was adjourned until April the 28th of 2023. The accused killer had not applied for bail, as reported by NCA Newswire on March the 3rd of 2023. Number 8. Priscilla Castro 32-year-old Priscilla Castro of Vallejo, California, was en route from Oakland to nearby Vacaville on August the 16th of 2020 to have her first date with a man she'd met online. Unreachable for two days, 
Castro was reported missing by her family on August the 18th. Her burned body was subsequently discovered on September the 2nd in the Stebbins Cold Canyon area. On September the 11th, Castro's alleged date, 29-year-old Victor Seretino, was arrested and charged with her murder. He was held without bail. According to Winter Express, Seretino allegedly tried to cover up evidence of the murder, and he ignited what became known as the Markley Fire on August the 18th of 2020. The Markley Fire combined into a large complex of wildfires that devastated much of the wine country area. After the fire spread to Pleasant Valley in El Dorado, California, 82-year-old Douglas Mai and 64-year-old Leanne James Bones died as their homes burned down. Seratino was charged with arson for starting the Markley fire and three counts of murder. Number 7. Bobby Scott On the evening of January the 23rd of 2021, a 20-year-old Florida man named Michael Harris Jr. was detained on a murder charge in connection with the death of 63-year-old Bobby Scott. The latter was last spotted leaving his home at about 11.30 a.m. on January the 17th. When Scott's husband reported him missing, the authorities thought he might have visited the Orlando region. Using OnStar technology in Scott's car, officials tracked the vehicle and discovered it in Harris's possession in Deland, Florida, two days after he disappeared. Harris claimed that Scott had loaned it to him. According to deputies, Harris added that he had not had communication with Scott since then. When detectives spoke with Scott's husband, he said that he'd never loaned anyone his car. Later, when the vehicle was recovered, law enforcement discovered Harris's bloody fingerprints inside. The Volusia County Sheriff's Office reported that Scott's body was eventually recovered in an area off the 2900 block of Old New York Avenue in Deland. The investigation revealed that Scott was beaten to death with a beer bottle and a piece of wood by Harris. The suspect was held without bail at the Volusia County Branch Jail. According to investigators, the two men had exchanged messages on a dating app. Investigators believe that they had agreed to meet for a tryst before Scott's death. On April the 26th of 2021, a grand jury indicted Harris on a first-degree murder charge. Number 6. Shraddha Walka The online dating service Bumble expressed its devastation over the death of Shraddha Walker, aged 28, who was killed on May the 18th of 2022 in South Delhi, India, by her living lover, Aftab Amin Poonawala, also 28 years old. They'd gotten together on the website and had been dating since 2018. Bumble reacted by stating that it was devastated to learn about this unspeakable atrocity and would stay available for the authorities at any time, according to an NDTV story. The investigation team from the Delhi police stated that it would also contact the dating service where Walka and Poonawala met. According to police, the couple had moved into the Murali apartment on May the 14th, four days before the incident. They both had jobs at contact centers and had been living together since the previous year, initially in Mumbai. The pair relocated to Delhi and spent a week living in a hotel due to Walka's parents' disapproval of their interfaith engagement. Before settling into the rented home, the couple frequently engaged in tense disputes over infidelity. That was a major point of friction, and Walkar frequently accused Poonawala of cheating on her. According to News 18, Poonawala allegedly strangled Walkar in a fit of fury over domestic matters on May the 18th. The following day, after buying a knife and a new refrigerator, he allegedly went on to slice up her body into 35 pieces. According to the authorities, he began disposing of the body parts every day at 2 a.m. in the nearby forest region and other areas of the national capital and continued doing so for the next 18 days. When the Walkar family reported her missing to the Manikpur police station in Mumbai, the incident came to light. Poonawala was then contacted and twice summoned for questioning. He was identified as a suspect based on conflicting claims he'd made regarding his partner's bank account and online activities. In November of 2022, Poonawala was charged by law enforcement with the murder. Number 5. Wendy Duan On the night of January the 7th, 2023, police found the body of 28-year-old teacher Wendy Duan in the 1100 block of Oxford Mills Lane in the New Territory neighborhood of Sugarland, Texas. Officers were called to the location by a neighbor who reported hearing four gunshots. A 28-year-old man named Chavez Thompson was detained in Louisiana in connection with her death and was being extradited to Texas at the time. According to the victim's mother, the two had started dating only a week prior to the incident after meeting on the dating service Meet Me. The neighbor who dialed 911 
claimed that Duane had showed her a photo of the suspect just before they were set to meet. On March the 9th of 2023, law enforcement revealed that Thompson was found dead inside his cell while inside Caddo Parish Jail in Louisiana, according to ABC 13's report. Number four, Dustin Barham. In the early morning hours of July the 25th of 2018, Dustin Barham, a 24-year-old with a learning disability, was killed after being persuaded to go to the Sierra Point Apartments in the 1400 block of South 107th East Avenue, Oklahoma, through the Meet Me dating app. He was shot in the leg outside the apartment complex and then tried to flee to his 1991 Chevrolet pickup truck for safety, where he was later discovered with severe injuries. When Barham attempted to leave the scene, his truck reportedly collided with another vehicle. After being taken to the hospital, he passed away. Police arrested 24-year-old Kelsey Lip and 28-year-old Alexandria Reinhardt for the crime. During an interview with Tulsa police, it was discovered that two women had talked Barham into meeting them using a fake social media account with the intention of robbing him at gunpoint. Barham was shot as a result of a struggle for the gun. Reinhardt first told the officers she'd been the shooter, according to court filings, but later recanted. She then alleged that 25-year-old Delone Gay, a lover at the time, had shot Barham. On April 3rd of 2019, Delone was apprehended and charged with first-degree murder and robbery with a firearm in a homicide. Reinhardt and Lip were also charged with first-degree murder. Lip was additionally charged with robbery, but because she belonged to the Cherokee Nation, her trial would be more complicated because the state couldn't prosecute her. Her case was to be transferred to tribal courts. The court system stated they only had two judges and needed more funds and a larger workforce to manage all the cases they were given. Number 3. Alan Philpion Johnson III Early on the morning of January the 9th of 2022, 24-year-old Alan Philpion Johnson III was fatally shot four times by Asheri Gadsen, a 21-year-old woman he'd met through a dating app. Gadsen attempted to rob him inside her apartment at the 7600 block of Suzanne Drive, North Charleston, South Carolina, according to law enforcement. An affidavit indicated that at around 3.45 a.m., North Charleston police officers arrived at the scene and encountered a grossly intoxicated Gadsen near the driveway. She then led the officers into a bedroom of her apartment where Johnson was suffering from gunshot wounds. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Gadsen told the officers that she and Johnson were alone in the apartment. She added that when she went upstairs to check on him, he was on the floor. According to law enforcement, Gadsen's level of intoxication required her to be transported to a local hospital. Gadsen told the police that she and Johnson had met online through the Tinder dating app, which led the officers to examine her cell phone. Through deleted conversations between Gadsen and an unnamed individual at the time of the investigation, it was discovered that she conspired with two people to rob Johnson at her house. Gadsen had left one of her accomplices a message saying the apartment door was unlocked moments before witnesses told law enforcement that gunshots were heard. Later, after Gadsen was read her Miranda rights, she confirmed being an accomplice in the crime. Jail records show that Gadsen was charged with murder and attempted armed robbery and was being held in the Charleston County Jail without bail. A few weeks later, on February the 28th of 2022, two additional arrests were made in connection to the case, according to Live 5 News. 28-year-old Joshua Latre Mack and Zora Simone Henderson, aged 19, were charged with murder and attempted armed robbery. Additionally, Mack was charged with possession of a weapon during a violent crime. Gadsden, Mack and Henderson were denied bond. Number 2. Meshach Cornwall Sometime in the early morning hours of December the 17th of 2018, Ohio woman Shakira Graham, aged 24, shot Meshach Cornwall, a man she'd met on a dating site called Plenty of Fish. Graham was arrested on February the 13th of 2019 at a Cleveland home on Fairmount Boulevard owned by her mother. According to the authorities in Cleveland, she and Cornwall had spent the night together at his Garfield Heights home on December the 15th of 2018. Two days later, Graham went back to Cornwall's residence and allegedly robbed him of his gold 2009 Honda Accord, cell phones, guns and television. She fatally shot Cornwall in the process and was subsequently charged with aggravated murder. On March the 4th of 2020, Graham was sentenced to life in prison with parole eligibility after 25 years. 
Thanks for watching. Would you rather date a killer online or have no internet access for a week? Let us know in the comment section below.